Hi, so in video 1042 we made this thing, which I call the magnetically assisted solenoid. I'm sure there are better terms for it. But we made that because it was super, super simple to make. And I went through the details of it and how it works in that video. So of course the next thing I promptly did was make six of them. So I've made six of those and put them on this board in this circular arrangement. What it is actually is kind of two Ys of three. So there's three here that are joined up in like a Y shape. And then the corresponding three here joined up in a Y shape and I've wired them together. Now I've wired them together where all of the neutrals, which are the black ones, I put a black tab on here and a red tab on there. All of the blacks are wired in one piece all together. And then two of them opposing here and here. The red ones are wired to take me to a phase. The next two opposing here and here, the next phase, the next two opposing the next phase. So I've effectively wired this up in a Y configuration three phase motor. So that's what I've done. Now I tagged these black and red because when I put a current down these at black and red, a DC current, then the polarity is in one direction. We actually get the thing on in that direction. When there's no power, we get a very weak effect. And when the power is reversed in the other direction, the magnetism is completely off. So I've wired those up so that three phases will do that. So if we go here, that will mean that that one and that one, if they receive a signal, will be on. These ones will be slightly on, and these ones will be off. So we're able to rotate that field by turning these off and on by phases. And of course, that's exactly what we want. Now, we've got a, effectively a six-pole stator for a magnetic motor here. What we need in this, because it's a motor, is a four-pole rotor. Now, we're working on axial flux motors, remember? So that four-pole rotor will effectively be a cross of steel, nothing else. So we need to make the cross of steel, the rotor, slide it in there and get some signals down those lines to make this motor work. So that's the rotor. It's just a lump of plastic with four arms at 90 degrees. And of course, it's made out of builder's board or Sintra board. I just love that stuff. Obviously, it goes right in there. And then we have a support arm to support the other side of the axle. And that is the motor more or less finished. Now, it is a reluctance motor, so it has nothing else on that rotor apart from lumps of steel. So I've got some stock steel. It's one inch bar or 25 mil bar. I've cut off two inches, 50 mil, and they glue on right there with nothing else. So we turn the magnets on, the steel gets attracted to the magnets. Now, there's loads of ways to make these things. One of the reasons I've made it this way is because it's really simple. I didn't use a lathe in this. I used nothing more complicated than the drill press and a hacksaw, and we're able to make a motor. So all I have to do is glue those bits on there and then we'll see if we can get it to spin. Okay, so there it is all put together. Now the geometry of these little metal pieces actually really matters. But it's been made like this because you'll notice there's about a five millimeter gap there. The actual engineering isn't that critical to get it running. I mean, the closer the gap, the better it engineered, the better it's gonna run, but we have a running motor here. Now I need a motor controller, which I don't have for this motor. So what I'm going to do is just connect up a wire and flip a switch and we'll see if we can get that to rotate or not. <laughs> That's actually very cool. So there we go, a working motor. This is a proof of concept, really. We built this out of these uh, magnetically assisted solenoids being the whole point of it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.